Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and today I'm going to get into a networking video and this particular one is going to get into how to throttle a very particular device on your home network if you're using a internet service providing uh, Wi-Fi router modem combo. Now, as far as things goes, I um, ran into this, uh, s someone that I know, they um, have a Wi-Fi router modem combo from their internet service provider. And um, basically they had several devices on their network and one of the devices, specifically the Xbox, was using 50% of the data cap per day on their network. Well, obviously the answer to this, like always, is don't use a ISP Wi-Fi router modem combo but use your own but in some cases that's not a, a viable source a uh, solution because it might be cheaper to just be able to use that and and whatnot so let's assume that you cannot get around that and and you got to use the isp's wi-fi router uh, modem combo well first things first is um ask yourself can you get into the isp's wi-fi router or not because there is some of them that you can't you, you have to literally call up joe blow down at tech support in the isp and say hey can you reset my wi-fi router or can you change the name or do you know stupid things add port forwarding do this do that and um that's stupid all around but you know oh well, how things are so if you can get in, what you need to do is go ahead and take a look at the settings there. Is there a QoS uh, setting? Yes, then take a look at that and see if the ability is within there. And also another place might be parental controls. That's also another place that you can take a look at. Now let's assume that you don't have that ability, either one. Well, what you need to do is find a new Wi-Fi router. It might sound kind of counterintuitive having two Wi-Fi routers, but this old one is not going to be a Wi-Fi router anymore. So what's going to end up happening is you need a new Wi-Fi router. So one big thing to note is let's just say this new Wi-Fi router, um, it's cheap. All you can find is cheap stuff. Well, what you need to do is go in to the following site and see if it's supported on this list the reason why is um, if it's cheap it probably doesn't have the ability to throttle devices and what you're going to need to do is throw this on there and this will give you the ability to throttle the devices and plus a few other things but let's assume that the wi-fi router can do that the new wi-fi router can do that what you need to do is just basically set it up there and then the following steps will take place but uh, let's say that you are you, you go through here and, and you need to install this. What I highly recommend doing is, and, and again, I'll leave a link down below to this where you can look at the make and model of your Wi-Fi router and figure out if it can if it's supported within this. What I highly recommend that you do is that you look at the make and model and also DDWRT installation videos on YouTube. The reason why I, I, I mention that is there's thousands of Wi-Fi routers out there and me making an individual video for each and every one of them is dumb. It's You're talking about tens of thousands of dollars for most of the videos have an average of zero views. So with that, the, the fact is, is most people have already made videos on it. There's guides on most of that stuff. So just run with that and, and just enjoy so assuming that you have that up and running, what you need to do is fairly simple. On the new Wi-Fi router, what you need to do is look at the Ethernet port list. So assuming that you don't know what you're looking at, what you'll most likely see is a bunch of squares. And just look on Google, what does an Ethernet port look like? And what you need to do is fairly simple. If uh, once you figure out what an Ethernet port looks like, is look for something like this. 
Now, the configuration might be a little bit different one way or another, but majority of the time, there's a gap between one of the ports and all the other ports. They're all equal size, by the way. Just imagine that. Sometimes, there's even a globe next to one of the ports. Sometimes, it even says Internet. That is the Internet port, or that, that tends to be the Internet port. Fine. So, what you need to do on the new Wi-Fi router is connect the um, internet port to the um, to the uh, one of the regular ports on the old Wi-Fi router. And what what that's going to do is basically it's going to use this as a pass through. So the internet port is connected on the new Wi-Fi router, regular Ethernet port on the old Wi-Fi router. And it's going to basically treat this as its own network into itself. Great. So what's going to be happening is the devices are still going to try to connect to the old Wi-Fi router. How do we stop that? Well, assuming that you can get into the old Wi-Fi router, what you need to do is copy all the uh, the, the Wi-Fi router to SSID and the password, so the name of the Wi-Fi router and the password for the Wi-Fi onto the new one and shut off the Wi-Fi ability from the old Wi-Fi router. Or if you can't do that, have it change its SSID. Um, that's a, also a simple way to do it. If you have to call your ISP, you know, at that point, just have them change the Wi-Fi name and go from there. And um, from there, what happens is, is since all these things are looking up for the old SSID and that doesn't exist on this one, but is this here? It will it will send both the SSID and password look at it and I'll try to do authentication and it will connect to the new Wi-Fi router without you having to do anything else. Now, of course, there might be some devices that act up. In that case, just unplug the device and plug it back in, make sure you power off power on type of thing, and, you know, see if that works. So, from there, after all that's done, what you need to do is um, go into the new Wi-Fi router and go into the QoS settings and see if you can throttle the devices. You may need to go into the devices itself, into the network thing, the network settings, and look up something that's called a MAC address. So it'll be something like that, and it'll be like some weird numbers and letters and whatnot. So just go with that um, and, and find a MAC address. Just try to get close, take, you know, use your phone, take a picture of the MAC address, delete the picture afterwards because the MAC address is a identifier per that particular device into itself. So with that, um, you can use that and say, I want to throttle that particular device and on from there. Now, how about dealing with uh, the internet service provider throttling you from watching Netflix or whatever? Now, depending on the Wi-Fi router, um, the operating system that's on it, you may be able to throw a VPN connection to it. So with that, so let's say, for example, that you use a VPN. My favorite is private internet access, at least at this time. It's my, my favorite. So what happens is, is currently the um, Wi-Fi, uh, the, the internet, once the router has its stuff, it goes through the old Wi-Fi router modem combo then goes out, it hits the ISP, and the ISP can see where the stuff's going. And if it's unencrypted, they can even see the stuff that's in between, use that cell. And they can even inject ads into the uh, sites that you're visiting. They could do some very nasty things like that to double up the money. And, and many places actually do that, where they actually inject stuff uh, uh, into the sites to double up the money into itself. So <clears throat> with that... How do you get around that? Instead of it um, just directly going out to the internet, what happens is it um, goes through, if, if you have the VPN set up, um, say on the new Wi-Fi router, it goes out and it's encrypted on the new Wi-Fi router and it goes out 
hits the ISP, goes down, and hits the VPN. And from the VPN, it's unencrypted with a layer. And then it hits the regular internet like it would before. So the purpose of this is between the actual new Wi-Fi router and VPN, it is encrypted. No one can see where the traffic's going other than anyone who might break the encryption, which, you know, it's not really going to happen, or the uh, VPN itself. Um, it, the, the, since, since they're having to unencrypt the thing and, and direct the traffic from there, they kind of have to see where it's going to go. But this means that the ISP won't be able to see, oh, you're going to Netflix, so therefore let's slow down your internet connection so that there's a higher chance you use our stuff instead of theirs because it's competed um, and, and we want a unfair advantage of things. So that's something to note. Um, basically, you can get around shady crap like that, shady stuff like ISPs, the throwing internet ads into your stuff, uh, into the websites and so on, it, by just simply using something like a VPN between the Wi-Fi router and the uh, and there and um, that way you don't have to worry about setting up a VPN connection per device. Uh, anything that hits that Wi-Fi automatically has VPN access that's going out. So um, with that, if you got any other, if you got any questions, anything else like that, then feel free to leave that down there in the comment section. Um, if I got anything wrong, let me know. Um, if I got anything right, let me know. Uh, if you want me to cover anything in the future, whether this, gaming, or anything else, then feel free to let me know, and I'll take a look at that. Leave a like, subscribe, share, and check out my Patreon and whatnot. And I'll see you next video. Hope you have a great day.